Fight my demons, come out to play All my anger goes away I'm ready for it I'm ready for it What's up guys? So today let's talk about lasers. Right? And how to choose the right laser for what you're intending on doing. Now, what I have here is uh, the five lasers that I have at hand, but we'll talk about a few others that, that are available out there and, uh, and that you may be able or be interested in and not know anything about. And I'm going to try and give you guys the best and uh, and I guess the most exact answers for what I know about all these lasers, right? And what you may need to know, right? None of the the BS that you're going to waste your time kind of uh, researching. Now, we're not going to talk about what type of lasers and how they're emitted out of these things. Although it's important, uh, I, I find that it's kind of a waste of time um, because most people don't care about how the lasers are emitted but they care about how they work, right? How, how they're gonna be put to use and what they look like. So going through it, uh, let's let's go through each of these lasers and um, and I'll try and cut in some video of uh, each of them in, um, in a dark setting through night vision um, and, and hopefully give you guys a good representation of what you're looking for. The problem is through a camera, through night vision, the lasers always looked uh, or always look a little bit different, whether they're too bright or they're too dim. Um, but I'll, I'll try and uh, depict that as we go through. So let's start from, um, let's just go, go through it, right? So one by one. Now, the first laser we'll talk about is an actual pistol laser, right? So for handguns, it could use on, uh, it could work on a rifle. This is the Streamlight uh, TLR VIR-2. Right, the the version one I have no idea about. I did not try it, but the version two looks pretty nice and has been working really well since. So if you guys have never seen one, it's it's a pretty simple design. It looks and uh, and fits in the same holsters as the TLRs, uh, right? The HL versions in the Safari Land holsters. It works in all of them, even if it's set for a Surefire. Uh, I use it all the time in one. So don't don't get too uh, bound up in that one, but what it's what's kind of cool about it, right? You have your little zero points where you can zero it. Um, you do have a white light feature, and uh, I'm sorry, a visible feature which is just white light. You have an off, and then you have an IR feature which is an IR floodlight and an IR uh, pointer, right? So there's no visible pointer. There's nothing like that. You have to zero it under night vision. Um, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is, right? It is a laser um, for your pistol. So if you aren't able to RMR your guns and you have night vision capabilities, I will tell you that uh, using a red dot on a handgun is a way better option, but this one works really, really well, and I'm very happy with it. So definitely something to look at uh, if you're looking for pistol-mounted lasers. Now, there are other pistol-mounted lasers main, made by... Steiner and the Steiner PL and stuff like that. They they all work uh, pretty well for late or for handgun stuff. I still wish they were um, their their beams were a little bit tighter. But other than that, uh, most of the pistol mounted lasers work really well. But remember, that's kind of a niche thing. And if you're using a red dot, um, it don't matter. So personally, I find the red dot or an RMR or a mounted la or a mounted optic to be way more suitable for handguns than uh, mounted lasers. That way you still have white light capability. But overall, not a bad option. Uh, I truth, uh, Truthfully, I think it's it's super fun to shoot. Um, and it's really uh, one of those cool little things that when you throw it on a handgun, people get to see how handgun stuff works under night vision, which all my daytime classes don't get to see. So I've actually thought about getting a visible laser for my handgun just to teach certain things. So something cool, um, but really strictly for the handgun. You could use it on a sub gun or something like that, but personally, uh, 
I would go with a real laser or a, a more uh, rated laser for that kind of abuse. Now, going down the line a little bit, right? Let's talk a little bit about the Hollow Sun. Now, the Hollow Suns, uh, their lasers aren't aren't horrible, right? They work, they do the job, they're on the civilian level of illumination, um, right? They have visible and IR capabilities. It's it's kind of cool the way they set up the switch. Um, they do a an off visible low IR low. Then they go on the opposite end, they go visible high, IR high, and then all, all the rest. And then in uh which one call it? illuminator low and then IR and illuminator high, which is kind of cool the, the way that they did that. It's a little different uh than the other dials that we're used to. So it was it was a cool uh option. The other thing they did was instead of turning over here on the bezels to tighten your illuminator. Uh, they did it in the back here. Kind of cool. I really like that they did that. That's a different option, a different uh, feature, a different thing of uh, or or way of going about it. Pretty smart, pretty decent. Um, I don't like that they didn't go with a normal uh, standard laser. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, standard pressure switch port. They went with their own flavor on it. I dislike it. It's not useful. It kind of sucks but it's something to think about if you're gonna get one of these and you wanna use a pressure pad, it's not gonna be the same ones that are similar to your Surefire dual pressure plate or pressure pads and stuff like that, which which work in all the rest of these lasers. So something to think about there. Um, what I did like was what they do is they slave all three, the visible, the IR laser, and the illuminator all to the same uh, dials so everything zeros to the same distance and it's all slaved together so kind of cool and uh, and I wish these others did that as well um, let's see other than that the fire button is kind of made for a righty right for holding the rifle this way you're you're more for a righty than a lefty but lefties with bigger hands you can reach um, but it's it's one of those things to think about now on the other end of this, and what I dislike about this laser the most, is its mounting system. The mounting system needs to be updated, but it is something that I highly suggest gets changed on your laser if you were using one, because this thing with recoil gets battered enough that it comes loose, and then all of a sudden your laser flies off your gun and is doing no, no good for you. So... Just something to think about. This this latch does get loose, especially with this spring-loaded uh, detent or holder, whatever you want to call it. And uh, and this little piece, it'll it'll move in recoil because of the G's. And then next thing you know, it lets lets this little latch loose, and then it flips open. So just something to think about with the with the Holosun lasers, guys. So not a bad laser though. The Illuminator is pretty decent. Going down the line a little bit, right? Steiner D ball. Oh, well, before we get into that, right, like in between this um, is where I find the the purse laser come in. And that's the Russian laser that everybody's been asking about and talking about. Um, one of my biggest problems with a, a Russian laser that's not regulated, um, one, you don't know its real output. Although it may say it, we don't know it, but it's a pretty high powered output if I've uh, from the ones I've seen. Um, the other thing I dislike about it, if there's any damage to it, you can't get it repaired. So that's a choice uh, up to you on those kind of things. But it is a pretty high output laser uh, and illuminator, but it has its downsides. If I had one, I'd show you guys, but I don't have one because I'm not going to waste my money on it. Um, going down the line, right? So the D-balls. D-balls uh, from Steiner are pretty well known. They're I see them all the time. I see them in law enforcement courses. I see most civilians have one because it's it's like in the middle. It's a good laser or good, uh, it's a decent size laser and it puts out pretty good stuff for what you're trying to do. Um, as you can see, mine's been used and abused. It's, it, I've definitely have some mileage on this one. Um, a couple things, right? This is a civilian model. It does exactly what I needed to do for a civilian model laser. Right, there are some downsides, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But overall, this is probably one of the most popular lasers I find. 
uh, it is pretty good on output. The Illuminator sucks though, right? It looks like Petri dish. It kind of looks like uh, there's bubbles in my, in my Illuminator. Now, it could be part of dirt. It could be just the Illuminator. Some of these older model lasers have that type of Illuminator because it's being, ref uh, uh, it's one laser that's being refracted everywhere. So in some form or fashion, whatever, whatever the science is that they put behind it. So just be aware that that's one of the things. This one has a visible laser and it has an IR laser and the settings are pretty simple. Like if, if I go from off, which is uh, horizontal, if I go from off downward, I have low laser, a visible laser and high visible laser. So both of those act as lasers on, on different settings or visible lasers. Anywhere on the other side, if I go clockwise on this one, is all IR lasers. So IR illuminators, IR laser, IR illuminator and laser, whatever it is, they're all different settings for those learner settings for the laser that you're using. Um, then we have this Viz override port. This is actually a pretty cool feature if you're in law enforcement and you're going to go white light and actually go ahead and put put dudes into a, uh, a situation where they need to pay attention to you and understand that you're pointing at them. This is a, a pretty good one for aiming through gas masks with white light, things like that, where you can override any setting you have on here with a visible laser and still use your white light if it's attached to that as well. So good ideas. I like it a lot. It's pretty cool. Um, and, and it's something that you may want to be looking for in law enforcement, a Viz override in some way. The other port is just your general on off port for your switches. And it does use the regular Surefire switches. You have to manipulate the switch a little bit because they, uh, Surefire and them had like this whole discussion about their shit and apparently somebody got butt hurt or whatever. So you have to modify your switch just a little bit. The tip is a little long. <laughs> tip. Uh, so there, uh, on, on the D-ball lasers, you also have the ability to put a front sight on there. Uh, this one's made by Rail Skills and Sage. Created a good, um, uh, front sight that's fixed at the right height for your rear as long as you have a rear adjustable you can do any adjustments you want to but it's a really good backup um, which that's what irons are for nowadays they're backups so not a bad deal and it gets it cleans up some of the space on your rail if you need to have an iron sight uh, especially by policy um, adjustment wise you have a slaved IR and a slaved uh, visible so they're both slaved together so your adjustments equal so you, I can zero this during the day and the IR will be relatively close um, the problem with this is that uh, your IR and your viz come out of different holes so one uh, one of the things that I try to tell people about is that hey you still have to confirm your IR laser in the dark for accuracy most people don't care about accuracy in the dark but it fucking matters all right, it, it's probably even more critical because you can't see. So uh, something to think about there and all you you guys just, oh, that's good enough. And then they just d deal with it. I, I'm not a good enough kind of guy. I want to be good, right? If you say good enough, that means you know there's better. So be careful of that, uh, that those phrases. Um, something to think about too, battery is really hard to get off when it's on a rail. So you may have to detach it to get the, the battery off. Um, not a big deal, but something to think about. And your illuminator is not slaved to the lasers. So you have to zero this separate from this, which is pretty easy. That's something you could dial in while looking at where your laser is because you're just trying to uh, line them up to an extent. This one you zero to your gun. This one you zero to the laser, if that makes it easy. And then you have your adjustments on how wide and how narrow the uh, beam is on your illuminator by rotating this little guy so just something to think about there guys nothing crazy but uh want to throw those at you so that's a steiner d-ball and that's a civi model um one of the questions i get a lot is about the d-ball i2 or the i squared um the problem with the d-ball i squareds is that there's a couple of different models there's one that is just ir right you have an illuminator and a laser that are just ir and then you have one that is just a Viz laser and an IR laser, no illuminator. You have to be careful of which one you're buying and be sure that that's what you want. 
I don't suggest them. They're a pain in the ass. And personally, although they're cheaper and you can get them for a really good price, um, I prefer to stay away, save up more, get an A3, or get yourself a hollow sun as long as you zip tie it or the mount gets fixed. So just just my thoughts and, and my opinions on the, the D-Balls. Um, the, D, the D2 uh, is actually pretty sweet uh, because that illuminator is huge. It's just heavy as balls. And it's like having a VHS uh, player on the uh, top of your rail. So just something to think about there too. Now let's talk about the pecs. So pecs are not only for the guys at the gym that work out chest, right? We have uh, the pecs come in, in two or three variations. You have a uh, an Appial C, which is a civvy pec, um, and that one is really underpowered and and just I would stay away from it. It has a red laser. It's it, it, you can't really zero it during the day. You have to wait until really really deep into dusk to actually uh, play with it. And then also uh, on the uh, illuminator side, it it sucks. It looks like a petri dish. It's really dim, and there's no way to really uh, amp that up. So the Civi Pecs, in my opinion, are for people that just want like a clone gun and um, nothing wrong with it. Just I, I don't believe in, in cloning guns. Uh, my military gun sucked compared to what I use now. So just something to think about. Um, now the Civi Pecs, uh, I, like I said, they're just for those cloners or airsoft or whatever. On on the real side of things, right, you have your, your Pec 15s that are full power. This is what that this one is. Um, the attachment point isn't too bad as long as you tighten it down really good. It won't get loose. And, uh, and as you can see, like I tried to witness mark mine. So make sure you witness mark it. With this, right, we have settings that are down, which is one laser setting. And it's, and it's pretty dim. It's not the brightest uh, laser. Um, and it's red. So that's always like, uh, you know, choose your destiny. Uh, off is horizontal like the like the D ball was. They kind of run in the same circles, and then everything along the clockwise side or going clockwise on this are the IR settings. And if you're wondering what this little screw hole is, it's for these little blue screws so that you can set it so that it doesn't go to high power, uh, so you're not burning people's retinas and shit. Um, yeah, there's there's story time on that stuff, but I'm gonna leave it out of the video. Um, so, so just realize that that's what that's for. Anything past here is really high powered and you're hitting in the 45 milliwatt side and is something to think about there when you're using it against people. Um, and then you have your settings for your lasers and, uh, on this side, which are slaved as well. So you have your viz, uh, laser, and then you have your IR laser on the other side, and then you have your diffuser on top. That's what these adjust for. And then these on this side adjust for your illuminator. Once again, the illuminator kind of sucks on this. Not the best illuminator out there. Um, the uh, on the Civi packs on the full power packs, you're getting an actually good illuminator that can do some good stuff and push through some photons. But something to think about there. Um, I think that's pretty much it on the packs. Oh, one thing I do like about the packs is where their button is. It's a little easier for a lefty to get there on it on when it's on it's on a rail, um, almost as easily as a righty. As you can see, it's almost center line. This kind of helps you out compared to like the D ball and the uh, hollow sun. Something else that I wanted to mention that I forgot about the D ball is that uh, the D ball switch likes to get bumped really easily. So let's say I have it on on uh, low low. Right, so low IR and low illuminator because that's all I need right now. What'll happen is every once in a while after like a reload or I start manipulating the gun in some way and I have to come back to the laser, uh, I'll bump it and or I'll hit it on something and, and it'll switch really easily. That's one of the things I don't like about the D-balls is that their switches are really soft. Uh, it may just be my switch, but the majority of them that I've seen uh, are like that. So something to think about. Um, but they are easily bumped. That is one thing the pecs have really good is that it's recessed and you have to actually get your thumb in there to manipulate this thing. That is one thing I really do like about the pecs. Uh, something to think about there for those of you that, that you know are playing with these things. Um, personally though, if I could find a full power D-ball, I'd buy that over a full power pec. 
uh, because it gives me a full power green laser at different settings and it gives me uh, a better a better overall performance over the two uh, in my opinion right um so just stuff to think about when it comes to the civilians and the and the actual mill or full power uh, versions of these uh, lasers now to my favorite laser and I, I have no problem saying it because this is definitely one of the best and most innovative lasers I've ever seen and this is just a civilian model so one of the things I, I throw out there right so the B Myers mall and this is a C1 plus which is a civvy model it, it really is an all-encompassing laser um, I I tend to to gravitate towards this laser no matter what if I want to use laser devices, I stay away from all these and would just get one of these. Um, because I do law enforcement and military courses, uh, occasionally I run into guys that are using these. Sometimes they're using these. Sometimes they're using these. So I have to have a variation because I want to teach with or help them understand different aspects to their lasers if they're using it. And that's, that's called being a professional. So having the options. Now, with the malls, uh, there are two models. There's the C1 Plus and there's the DA model. And now they just came out with the X1 and all these other things, which is just a variation of the DA uh, model, just a slight, slight change in name and color. So um, one, of the, one of the biggest perks to this laser is that because it's a civilian model, if there's a problem with it, I can send it back, get it fixed, and get it back. With a full power laser that I don't have letterhead and I'm not part of any organization that'll let me send these back to L3 and get repaired. So something to think about for the guys that want full powers of any of these, you can get it. It's definitely easy to get, so don't, don't think it's hard. The problem is getting them repaired. That is one of my biggest things because I use these things a lot. They're all pretty beaten up except for this hollow sun. And that's because the Holosense doesn't belong to me, right? I'm borrowing it. And I don't treat things very nicely. I'm not overly abusive, but I do throw these things in a box on rifles that get rattled around quite a bit. So just something to think about. You want things that are rugged, which they are. They all have been really good, but things break. So I want to be able to, uh, especially on something so expensive, I want it to be rugged, but I also want it to be repairable, very easily repairable. Now, something to go through, right? So let's let's talk about it a little bit. One of the things I like about the mall is one, it's ergonomics. Real simple. It sits right above my light normally and uh, and really fits nicely and snug against my rail. Doesn't take up too much space. And guys with scopes that are lower, it's not obscuring any of your views. Um, one of the things that I really like about it too is that it comes with its own pressure switches. Doesn't doesn't cause me to have to use some kind of switch system, which it's not a bad idea if you're in an awkward position and stuff and can't get your hand all the way out to the rail, uh, depending on how long your rail is. It's not a bad idea to have switches, but the mall is definitely one of my favorites in that aspect. Um, also, the switchology. The on-off, right, is over here. We got all the vis settings, so all your visible settings, depending on what you want. And then IR settings, and they're tactile, and they also give you a certain idea of where you're at. So off is a flat top, right after off, and you can feel it fall into the detent is my viz settings. And then in the dark, I can always feel if I'm on IR because it's tactile, right? And I know that I can't go any further on the dial. So with that said, how do I switch from one laser to another or different distances? The way they do it isn't like, Hey, you get a low laser, a low illuminator, then a and then a high laser, and then a high illumi a high illuminator, and then a high laser and high laser uh, illuminator. So there's none of those like stupid settings, which I find dumb because most people just use the illuminator or laser on different uh, settings, low or high. I find this to be super easy because on the low setting, I'm getting a flood illuminator that fills up a room and a laser pointer. On the mid-range, I'm getting a little bit tighter, still a little bit of flood, and a good laser. Then on the full length or long range mode, it gives me a really tight illuminator and a really nice laser for shooting that. Or it just gives me a laser depending on which button I press. So once you learn your settings, once again, know your settings for your lasers. Once you know your settings, you have a lot, a lot of options and 
the options that people would actually fucking use. So that's the other benefit to it, in my opinion. Then let's talk about the back end here a little bit. Um, ooh, carbon falling off this thing. Look at that. That's carbon that's caked onto the bottom of my mall. Yeah. So <laughs> save that for later. It's a keeper. Um, so, so <laughs> back on track. The mall also on the back end gives you some some options, right? You have options for switches and and for uh, a little little switchology that somebody came up with, so you can use them in conjunction and have an override system as well. Um, look on Bill Blowers from Tap Rack; he has that option going on. Um, but you have two different tail caps that you can get. You can get the screw off, which is the one I have right here, and then the EC2, which is the one that has a fingered knob, kind of looks like. Uh, it's a knurled knob that goes on the back end that does that job for you. Um, I have one coming, so once it gets here, I'll have that. I like that option, right? Because you, you can you can have different tail caps. You can have one that's more slick, awesome, or you can have one that's a little bit more protrusive, but you can take it off without any tools. No big deal, up to you. Something cool about these malls as well, uh, for lefties, um, although this looks really weird, it wouldn't be fun for a lefty, What's cool is this module here, right? Once you unscrew the tail cap, you can pull off the tail, you can pull off the head, and then you have the body. The body can be flipped over, the head can be put back on, the tail can be put back on, and then you have the opposite size side laser. Really, really awesome. I like that option. Although I'm not a lefty, all my lefties rejoice because they're not being thrown out of the the the, the whole system or or at least what what's needed. Now, something else that comes up with the, this laser that, that uh, people ask about is these alternate setting, right? So the alternate um, screw is, uh, when you put it into alternate mode, it's supposed to work better with Photonus tubes, uh, which are European Gen 2 Plus tubes. Uh, when I had Photonus tubes, I tried it. I didn't see a difference. Um, what it does help with is it's a, the laser will flicker under photonist tubes on a low end mode if it's too close on on the cqb mode that's what it helped with so that's the only difference i saw when going with photonist tubes putting it in the alternate other than that i just kept it here it didn't bother me whatever no big deal but up to you on that kind of stuff all right so also the adjustments are here so you have your left and right and then you have your up and down which is on the bottom i would have liked it to be on the top but I don't know why they put it on the bottom. It's probably something to do with the engineering or, or the way everything's put in there. Uh, shit that I don't know about, so no big deal. Um, something else for those that need to tie down the mall, uh, there is a tie down loop in here. And then you also have this track here that is perfect for a zip tie to go around. So just something to think about too for those guys that need to tie down their stuff by policy. All right. so. Oh, what's the difference between the C1 Plus and the DA model? Uh, just a little bit of output. Uh, I can't see it with my naked eye. Um, you only see it on really on that long range mode when you're trying to reach out even further. That's the only time I actually see the difference and uh, it's very minimal. So personally, I am happy with the C1 Plus, but if I got a chance to have a DA, I would still have it because why not have more lasers that, that obviously I like to have them and I use them on all my guns for the most part. So. Not a big deal, uh, something to think about there. So those are lasers, guys. Now, um, on all the lasers, somebody's gonna ask me, which one do you prefer? The fucking mall, always. Now, the problem is the mall's super expensive compared to all of these. Um, and and we didn't even talk about like uh, an LA-5, which the pecs resemble an LA-5, but the LA-5 has even more power than a full power pec, which is, it's crazy good but it's still pec ergonomics so it's still i still i rather my mall by far now john what if i can't buy a mall which one should i buy well i'm not going to use this on rifles so right now it comes down to preferences right do i want a red laser or green laser oh john i want a green laser yeah me too All right john what do what do i want out of my laser well I want a good mount. I want it to work really well. I want to have a front sight still. Ah, maybe the maybe the D-ball A3 will work for you. Hey John, I don't have the price 
tag or money for an A3, hey, maybe a hollow sun will work for you. Just be aware of the mounting system and the, the limitation on the switches. So overall, guys, when it comes to picking a laser, when it comes to picking a laser in general, it is up to you, right? It's up to you, your budget, just like night vision. Also, what the hell are you going to use it for? So personally, I go with my best laser because I can afford, my budget allows me to get a mall. Um, but for you guys, if, if your budget doesn't allow you, one of these, one of these, even that may suit you for a certain amount of time. The problem is most people will buy one of these, be like, oh, it was great for like a year. And then I, I wanted something higher powered. And then I got this, oh, it was awesome for another year. And then I was like, man, I want something more ergonomic that fits with my style of doing things. And I'm more into night vision. Boom. So you end up back at the mall anyways. Most people do. <laughs> and and uh, not, I'm not saying it out of because that's what I believe. It's what I see in students, especially my, my uh, repeat offenders. And I see it in law enforcement agencies when I show them the difference between their pecs and D-balls and the damn mall. The B.E. Myers Mall definitely kills everything. It destroys them all. It is the best laser, in my opinion. But, like I said, your budget may dictate which one you can buy. So, guys, hope this helps uh, at least give you an idea of the lasers and what's available out there. And, uh, and hopefully give you a basis to go on to purchasing your laser. If there is any questions, go ahead and put them down below. And, uh, and if it's anything I can help with, I'll try and answer it. If it's stupid, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> So, have a good one. Bye, night vision. Tonight my theme is all about to play. All my 